The Chaldees are a race where both genders are extremely different from one to another. The male and female are bipeds, but that said, the male is large, 7'2", 2.2 meters, tall and average, with a large, dense and colorful carapaces across the body. They possess one large horn in the center of the forehead and are extremely aggressive in the mating season. And yes, we had a few incidents in the academia with them, usually with one another in the presence of a female. The female is blue, 5'5", 1.67 meters on average, and shares similarities with humans with the exception of the fur. They have no carapace and are frail. The feeling of the strangeness of studying your own species never left Lyra. The mating season was near and she would... Her thoughts were interrupted by a human waving at her. He was half a feet taller than her, in an athletic shape, and with light brown skin. Hey, Lyra, do you mind if we lunch together? That was a big surprise. How could he possibly know her name? She didn't know what to answer and even feel threatened in some way. How do you know my name? Replied Lyra in a suspicious manner. He frowned, but then smiled. Ah, sorry, a bit invasive, eh? I'm getting used to this species and culture thing. I asked the professor. I thought that we could chat a little about your species to help me in my homework, and when my species show up, we can chat. Her appendages on the top of her head raised a bit, a clear signal of embarrassment. Of course, it was logical and a very smart play to chat with her to increase his grades, and they talked a lot with each other on that particular day. What's your name? He smiled. Kyle. A week passed and they became friends. Not close friends, but they would chat with some attendants. Today is the first day of the mating season. Lyra's eyes caught a small but colourful Caldi male. His colour disposition wasn't like any other male. The shapes are squares with extremely vibrant tones in opposition to the common faded circles. She sighed. He would have no chance against a male with seven feet or more. Oh shit, it was Kyle. He sat on her side. Lyra didn't know how to cope with the fact that he is extremely hot in that clothing. I hope you enjoyed it. I figured out that this aesthetic would be appealing to your kind, with a plus that I'm stylish for my species standards too. She didn't know what to reply. Couldn't possibly consider mating her, could he? Yes, you are very stylish. He frowned his eyebrows. She didn't know how to interpret this signal. On the next day, he gave a gift. The gift has a special meaning. It would represent the skill of the male. Something made of steel means a blacksmith, gold could mean a merchant, and so on. Carl gifted a handmade star destroyer that could float. It's a replica of a popular human movie. I miniaturized an iron engine in this thing. Be careful to not make it kaboom. Nero was impressed. It takes a lot of skill and creativity to pull something like this. Why are you talking with this maggot? The blue alien didn't like it. It was her friend and just a... What? Fuck off, pal. She's already on my radar. This one wasn't 7-2, but an 8-foot alpha named Sur. Sur's punch descended from above and landed on Carl's face. It wasn't pretty, and his nose started to bleed. Come on! Punch me hard, motherfucker! yelled Carl. In rage, he tried again, but the human managed to grab his arm. What could possibly the human do? His punches would never penetrate the carapace. Carl moved his legs, grasped the arm as hard as he could, and then a crack. Sir screamed of pain, and Carl mounted on top of his competitor. One blow after another on the throat. It wouldn't crack the carapace, but the blows were strong enough to deform the carapace from its original position. The fight stopped when two human friends forcibly removed Kyle. Sorry, he has an Asari fetish, explained one to Lyra, as it would make any sense. What's an Asari? And what's a fetish? The explanation made Lyra faint.